Hey guys, Jason. And today I want to talk about stock splitting. Now, this might seem like a term that you read it once or twice in a textbook, and you know that it happens in the marketplace, but you don't think it has any real importance. And I want to tell you, you're wrong. It has a huge importance on the marketplace, and in the psychological effect of how a trader decides if he wants a trade or not, as well as the average you know, individual investor. And don't worry, it relates back to cryptocurrencies and why it's important in the cryptocurrency realm. So first, let's start to discuss what is a stock split. Well, let me start this with a example. So say I have a company, Jason Inc. And Jason Inc. sells shares for $20 a share, and they have a market cap of $20 million. Now, I have a company, Dolan Inc., and they have a comp they are selling shares at $10 a share, but yet they have a market cap of $20 million as well. Both companies have the same market cap, yet the $10 share might seem more attractive to the ad average individual investor. Not only is this a psychological effect of day trading and, um, here, here's a perfect example. Have you ever played the game Candy Crush? The game itself has a huge psychological addiction um, kind of built into it. Um, there, there's been tons of um, college essays written on this at the higher graduate level, and it's quite fascinating. Game developers nowadays are attempting to make games that get you addicted um, based on psychological effects and how your brain handles addiction. It seems crazy that a game can do this. Well, it, it's observed in the marketplace as well. With the you know a response of e-trades and digital marketplaces that allow the individual or even the middle class person to invest in the stock market on their own, we see psychological tendencies and relations in the stock market to be hugely inflated. Let me explain. So say you're using e-trade and you go to buy a company. Well, you're not, okay, you're not gonna buy a company, you're gonna buy a share in a company. You wanna become a partial owner. And you're comparing Dolan Inc. and Jason Inc. Now Jason Inc. has a $20 a share, market cap of $20 million. Dolan Inc. has $10 a share, but they're also $20 million. Both companies have the same market cap, yet one is $10 cheaper than the other. How does this work? Well, Jason Inc. would have half as many shares as Dolan Inc. Makes sense, right? Well, here's the thing. That $10 share seems more attractive to the average individual investor. There's a psychological effect. They feel like they're getting a better deal for their buck. We can observe this in penny stocks as well. If you know anything about the NASDAQ, you know that penny stocks aren't allowed on the NASDAQ. If they fall below the dollar, they start to get to pennies. They're usually kicked off after a 90-day warning period. But penny stocks seem... In Wolf of Wall Street. If you've ever watched Wolf of Wall Street, you know that penny stocks is how he made his money. Well, penny stocks have this great psychological effect that people think they're getting a really great deal for a company. They think this company's not doing very well. You know, I can get this company, I can buy a share for five cents a share. Now, in most cases, we observe that penny stocks have small market caps. Well, it's an outlier to have a, you know, a company that's selling $10 or 10 cents a share and a market cap of $100 million, but it's not uncommon. It, it can happen. Now, here's the thing. Think about Google. Think about Apple. I know Apple, for instance, their shares are over $600 a share. Now, if I was to tell an individual to go invest in Apple, they would laugh at me. Because you can't buy half a share, and $600 a share seems really expensive for the average investor. That's something that more hedge funds or retirement funds invest in, and that maybe a really wealthy individual does. But not your middle class, average, you know, e-trader, right? So, how do you get Apple to be more competitive if you're trying if they were trying to which they're not you can do what we call a split so apple could say you know we have and this is hypothetical we have 500 million shares we want to take the price from 600 down to 300 and i know if you're watching you're thinking they don't want to decrease the value of their stock well they're not what they're going to do is everyone that has one share at 600 will get two shares at 300. so the original investor that invested 600 dollars isn't losing anything but suddenly those investors who might have been on the edge of investing at $600 psychologically are more inclined to invest at $300. Thus, increasing buying power, increasing market um, realization because people want that stock. Um, this isn't that big a deal when you're talking three to $600, but when you're talking about a company that may be worth $80 a share and they can get it down to $10 a share or $20 a share, we see this huge market effect. Um, companies like Cisco have this. Great you know, example. So you say, how does this relate to cryptocurrencies and why should it matter? Well, with cryptocurrencies, you can buy half of, 
half a Bitcoin or half a Litecoin, but people don't do it. It's not, I mean, you can, and I see it happen, but it's, it's psychologically, you know, I tell people about buying Bitcoins, they're like, why would I want to buy half a Bitcoin? If I can't buy a full Bitcoin, what's the point? And I've brought this up in discussions before, but it's important. One of the reasons we're moving to middle Bitcoins and micro Bitcoins is because of this whole effect of not being able to get these coins because they're so expensive. People psychologically don't want to spend $300,000, $500,000 for a Bitcoin. So here's the issue. When we set cryptocurrencies in, in motion, they usually can't split because they're a finite resource, usually on an inflationary period, um, linearly growth on mathematical algorithms. In the marketplace, this isn't so. So why does it matter at all, Jason? Because when I try to tell somebody to go invest in Bitcoin, they go and look at the price and they say, oh man, bro, I, I missed the boat. Sorry, but I'm just not interested. It's too expensive. Now, Bitcoin, their way of splitting the stock is just by changing it from you know, regular Bitcoin you know, measurement to mill or micro or um, a Satoshi, which is the lowest form of currency Bitcoin you can get. But here's the thing. With other currencies that come out, and I talk about this a lot because I'm always advising people when they start to make these coins or you know, I'm talking to people about investing in cryptocurrencies. If I can tell someone like Litecoin, I can, and this is hypothetical, but I can say Litecoin is $3 a share or $3 of Litecoin. People are like, oh man, yeah, I, can, I can handle that. Or when I tell people that foreign coin is you know, one one hundredth of a cent, they say, oh my gosh, the boat hasn't you know, left yet. I can still make money. And again, I have to give my spiel about market cap and you know, total amount of those coins that are available in the market. Um, deflationary rates, I have to talk about how those coins get into the um, marketplace by either people bringing them up onto the exchanges, by people mining the coins or hoard, hoarding coins. There's a, huge, huge ecosystem of information out there that I have to concentrate into explaining to people how to buy these coins. But a stock split, the idea of not doing anything different, you're in essence, in essence just dividing the amount of shares you have while the owners get double. So no one ever loses money, no one ever gains money. So why is it effective? Because the human brain is a psychological mystery. And for some reason, we like whole numbers, and we like to think we have more of something. For instance, does it matter if you have 100 pennies or a $1 bill? Most children find that they like the 100 pennies more than they like the $1 bill. Why? Because to them, at their psychological level, more means more. Thanks guys for watching. I hope I explained what a stock split is, and why it's important, and why it relates back to cryptocurrencies, because it does. Investment-wise, cryptocurrency-wise, and inflationary wise. <laughs> inflation. I'm in micro macroeconomics right now and inflation is a big thing. So I talk about it here recently in my videos, but have a great day guys. Thanks for watching and have fun investing.